Sweden is the partner country. I'm Swedish, and I have the honor to do some nice talks here on stage. So we're going to start with a very exciting discussion uh, with the company Electrolux. Electrolux is Swedish, very big, probably the biggest white goods product, uh, producer in the world, with an enormous global presence. And I have the great honor to have the global director of digital industrial operations of Electrolux up on stage, Giovanni Pacini. Give him a round of applause, please. Hello. Hello, Giovanni. Welcome to us. Thank you. I don't Just think I need a chair. Are you going to have a chair? I'm going to have a chair. Me too. How are you doing, Giovanni? Oh, it's great. Yeah? That's full of energy. This morning we were starting with this kind of also authorities in Business Sweden Pavilion, also here in Siemens. So there is a lot of stuff going around. Yeah, and I'm going to go also go over to the Swedish Pavilion. I think I need to. I'm not sure if I have a chance to do it today. H have you had a chance to look some on our booth, our 4,000 square meters? Uh, yes, definitely. I will start with uh, all the additive manufacturing stuff because we are also printing a lot of goods yeah. already. Metal printing and plastic printing, thank you. And so that was the starting point. And then uh, digital twin and uh, moving to what we're already doing and what yeah. still there's to do from our side, which is completing this kind of circle that you were describing, which is fantastic, refeeding data from the plants. Yeah. And the mind sphere. Yeah. So all the IoT platform, which is something that we are now uh, pushing ahead. So these are the three elements that I will start uh, investigating. We will get back to that a bit closer. Um, Electrolux, for those of you who didn't know, actually was born 1919, yeah. which makes Electrolux 100 years old this year, which is fantastic. And my question to you would be, what do you think are the key ingredients for a company to stay successful such a long time in a fairly aggressive <laughs> business, right? I don't have a magic receipt, but I can tell you what are the main pillars that we are focusing in, uh, in Electrolux uh, that are act actually um, pushing to uh, improve as much as possible customer experience. Yeah. And this is an example of that. It's ki kind of old example because Electrolux first re ma really mass product was the most portable and the first portable vacuum cleaner. So we were not inventing vacuum cleaner, but we were making that portable. And so that was increasing the experience yeah. of the users. And the second, obviously, is operational excellence, yeah. right? So do things right first time at the minimum possible cost. Uh, so these are our two pillars. Yeah, and if you would expand on the customer experience, I mean, things have changed since those uh, things came alive. I don't know, the swinging 60s in the middle, I guess. It's just... Uh, <laughs> looks a bit different than today. But how do you work when you say customer experience? What's the thing there? Um, I think that uh, what we are really trying to have is a direct connection with the customers because we have customers that are uh, much, much more advanced th than also ourselves in yeah. the use of our goods. And so retrieving uh, uh, insights from customers, uh, pushing innovation, also leveraging other industries, and uh, leveraging data coming also from our, our goods. And maybe uh, you can also have the, the result of the evolution of this from what we were seeing to what we were presenting to yeah. uh, Mr. Prime Minister and Angela Merkel, because this good has been also using additive manufacturing in order to be produced. So this is kind of advanced of our, our uh, activities. Okay. And, good. and th then you said operational excellence. Um, I mean, that's kind of more related to your daily work, I would assume. Yes. As a digital specialist and a digital native, I would almost call you. Uh, how do you see that working? Well, uh, on, um, we are working heavily in our industrial footprint. Yeah. And uh, in, in um, digitizing our factories, and also working on all the digital twin of our factories, simulating everything before going to production. And uh -huh. this has been uh, our main rule uh, since a couple of years, that we are not going to invest and to install anything unless it is previously tested in virtual reality. Using digital twin of both the product and production. Exactly. So we are moving from the, the CAD file of the, of the, of the product, on Team Center, yeah. moving on Technomatics in this case, in order to simulate the full process, the plant, all the material flows, 
the process and also the ergonomics of the operator in order to understand uh, very early what are also the constraints that we'll be having in a plant. All I will right. make an example to you. In our engineering of our production plant in, um, in Brazil, we were simulating the full process and we spot in advance 16 issues. 16? 16, one six. And the impact that these 16 issues would have created in uh, real implementation we estimated in six month delay in the project and more than half a million cost to fix it. So just simulating in advance was just delivering the value itself of cutting six months and saving half a million. So, so that's the process. You always simulate and you test and validate and then you can see how that goes on. Is correct, that? correct. And uh, this is also resulting in, um, let me say, in simulating how the operator is working. So you can also uh, simulate, yeah, um, the workplace and all the material uh, feeding on the, on the workplace in order to test also the ergonomics of the workstation. Okay. Um, I said in the introduction that uh, Electrolux is present on some 150 different markets. Yep. You produce uh, 60 million products and you have, uh, I don't know, how many employees on 50 production sites? 56,000 employees, yeah. 56,000. And if you want to go implement digitalization in this environment, that is a fantastic, interesting process or project. How did you go about that? How would you attack this? Because uh, it is a big thing. Uh, I will mention two main elements. One, how we're working in the factories. And secondly, maybe how we're working with people. Mm -hmm. uh, on factories, uh, we are having two main uh, activities to be done. Okay. One is to create in the backbone of connectivity. Everything you can see here in Anover is about connectivity. Right. So you need to have this integrated layer between equipment providing data to um, a system which is organizing information, receiving also information about the material movement, so RFID and tracking of all the goods inside a, inside a plant. And this is the creating the backbone. How I can say that is that uh, reorganizing work orders because the plant is a real society. You can have thousands of people that need to receive instructions. Okay? And uh, this is our evolution of our plants uh, that now are like, in some cases, jellyfish to a human being. What's the difference? A jellyfish doesn't have a central nervous system, right? Uh -huh. So it's taking decision every piece of the, of the body independently. And what we are doing is creating sensors in all the factories a spinal cord in order to transmit all this, this information to a central brain, which is re-elaborating information. And this is the evolution for our plants itself. Once you, you have done this, uh, you can start play. So on top of this backbone, you can start have ad uh, advanced, uh, uh, let me say, uh, learning algorithms. You can have uh, data visualization, smart watches with alerts, giving to the people information, wearable devices that are enabled by this backbone. Fantastic, fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> it is truly fantastic. And uh, I mean, w during this journey, uh, I guess it's very important to get the, the people in Electrolux on board this because uh, you're doing something new here. You're going a complete new way. And how do you go about that? Uh, <laughs> this is the real fun part of the equation and uh, also where we are getting the more energy because all exchange that we are having with other people is also feeding back us with new inspiration and learning, right? And in order to boost this kind of uh, innovation mindset, uh, we were also investing in opening a completely new concept of, uh, in, uh, of, um, of a space dedicated to innovation. This is our innovation factory, which is twofold and defined in, in, uh, in different areas. It's a co-working area to work with startups, inventors, suppliers, customers in order to meet up and to have fast, uh, let me say, um, experimentation of your goods, uh, validation of our, of our products in order to extract the most insight of also the experiences of our customers. Yeah. And on the other side, we have the laboratory where we are testing and trying real time uh, cobotic and so um, uh, automation with uh, wearable devices, uh, additive manufacturing, so the, the, the red parts were just printed in order to, to be used then. And so we are uh, real-time testing and simulating activities together in different teams and also used to explain to our people 
how we are, we are producing goods and also to our, our customers. So this is also part of the two things you mentioned in the beginning, to experience innovation, that you get in there and you have the, the direct input and feedback from the potential customers and experienced people. And Absolutely, yes. And we are trying to, to have it very, very close. The, the customer experience and the operational ex excellence in the same place yeah. in order to have close, val um, very uh, fast validation loops between the experience and the operations in the same place. Okay, good, good, good. And when you said the validation loops to feed back the information, uh, data analytics, um, you have edge, you have cloud technology. Is that something you also are looking into? Uh, this is the direction where we are looking at. Uh, sincerely, there is uh, also a lot of work to, to, to get there in order to distribute intelligence between uh, cloud and equipment on edge in order to find the right balance, and which is dynamic, because the more you're learning on the, on the cloud, the, the more you can update on the, the, edge, uh, the edge intelligence. So this kind of distribution of, of um, um, uh, experiences and learning power is something that we are also uh, working on our goods. So now I'm showing a picture of an of a, um, autonomous vacuum cleaner which is a connected good that we have, and we are already retrieving information on how these babies are, are working in the field, because also the problem is that they are working generally when the consumer is not at home. Yeah. So we need to collect information from the product itself to understand um. how it is working, if it is really optimizing also the, the performance, and how it is the behavior of the good, because it is autonomous. So we need to have a step further in the customer experience, because the customer is neither at home. Fantastic, interesting aspect. So that, that's also almost as close as what we are showing in our showcase. You saw that AGV. I'm not sure it moved. Ah, yeah. yeah. But that's the kind of the same thing. But this is a small AGV. Yeah, this small AGV. <laughs> but put V stands for vacuum cleaner. Yeah. <laughs> Very nice. So, so uh, I'm going to try to summarize um, what you said. Um, the, the, the key to success for Electrolux being 100 year is yeah. to have this tight talk and connection with your customers base, yep. being sure that they always get to experience the innovations in order to make their lives better or yep. better experiences. And then on the other side, you also spoke about operational excellence, uh, which would mean that you are you're trying to get better and at the same time also saving money, because that's what I understand. When you're simulating, you're checking it works, and before that, no investments are being done. I think that you made a fantastic summary, so I'm not adding anything. And okay. you were mentioning three times better, so I was just clicking to our purpose again. Yeah. So this is the purpose of our company, and we are just striving to uh, shape living for the better for our customers and also for our employees. So this is our uh, twofold mission. Uh, it's, yeah, it's fantastic. I'm looking at the time. We, now we have about one minute left, mm -hmm. and uh, I would like to ask you, would you like to recommend anything to our audience? It could be a book, food, a trip to anywhere, what would you say? Uh, I very recently was reading again George Orwell, 1984. Yeah. And I'm finding this, that was written 70 years ago. The trigger to my mind was how the use of data can be ethical or not. So how also looking to our future, we should expect that technology is helping us or not. Uh, my personal statement is that digital is all about people. But that means that people and data should be in a, in a good way together. Absolutely. And so uh, I'm just making an example. I think you have your, your phone, right? Your I iPhone? actually have it in the locker. Fantastic. Yeah. So are you allowing Mr. Google and Apple to use your localization data, your preferences? It happens. Yeah, because this is automatically and you're giving the consent, right, to that? Yeah. I'm asking you, are you feeling, uh, and uh, this is an open question for everyone, uh, comfortable in having your company using the same kind of information? <laughs> okay, let's uh, yeah, not, no, no, yeah, yeah, let me think about the it. answer, yeah, yeah. but I'm, I'm thinking that this is a question for us, right? Yeah. Why I should allow someone that I even don't know to use my data yeah. and not the company I'm working for, and I'm giving all my interest and my passion. So the point is trust, I think. So what's the use of data from my company, of my personal data. So looking ahead, I think that there are a lot of opportunities also in personal data information, like localization, identification of a people, 
think about safety, okay, in a big, big, big uh, production environment. What you can do in order to understand who is in hazardous area, if they are wearing the right PPEs to protect themselves, and if they have the skill to operate in yeah. that kind of equipment. So, again, is trust the key. I think that in five, seven years, we can also have a chief trust officer in a company, which is protecting uh, employees by misuse of personal data, but also having this kind of trust in using our personal data in our business life. Fantastic. So, George Orwell, 1984. In Was a it? good way, but... Yeah, 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 yeah. Interesting. Giovanni, thank you very much for joining me. Thank on you stage. very much. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Um, very interesting, and I hope to talk more with you during the next couple talk of weeks. Talk to you soon. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank bye. you very much. Thank you very much. Siemens. Ingenuity for life.